Hello everyone, Karen Cecilia here. <clears throat> the phone is still suffering from being low, so um, please bear with me as I try to get it up to scratch. Um, I don't know, I don't think I'll ever get it up to scratch. <clears throat> Sorry, but I'm trying. All right, um, it's a lovely, 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 lovely day, a great day to be alive. I think that's how I start my voice notes so going forward. It's a great day to be alive, lovely day. To be alive um, for all you youtubers listening and tuning to me when you finish listening to this if you like what I am saying I'm asking to subscribe if you have a comment that you want to make to disagree or agree with me please comment and after you finish doing that if you like it then you like it again by clicking the like button and if you think it was worth your while and you think that somebody should hear it, then share it. And then the final thing you need to do is that if I am interested enough, and I do believe I'm an interesting person, believe me, I am an interesting person. Um, there's so much more about me that you don't know, but I'm interesting. And if you believe I'm interesting, then press the notification button. And um, so when, whenever I post a video or come in on live, you can get to see it first. So, you know, people who press notification are basically like, like VIP or VVIP. So please, subscribe, comment, like, share, and press the notification bell. I thank you all for those of you who have subscribed. I thank you all for those, those of you who have been listening and watching my videos. Um, thank you for your support. The, the channel is growing and God is good and to him I give all glory and, and, and praise. So I want to start this. I, I told you um, that I am going to look into a couple of of the um, the parishes based on this last local government elections. I said I was going to look at some of the parishes, how they voted, some of the the divisions. I'm not going to go to all of them, of, of course, but today I am going to look into Saint Mary and um, Saint Anne, but not Saint Anne generally. I just want to look specifically. At Southeast Saint Anne, and then maybe there are one or two other places I probably like to like to mention, but um, that. But I want to start by talking about the common the Caricom meeting on Haiti. Now, when I saw the Caricom meeting on Haiti, Haiti going on, I I put on a post on Facebook to ask the question: If is Mark Golden invited? to the CARICOM meeting. And uh, somebody answered me and said, he's not, a, he's, not, he's not a head of state or he's not this or uh, that. But there's a particular reason why I asked. And so I asked, is Mark Golden invited to the, to the CARICOM meeting? I asked because uh, there are certain traditions among prime ministers and, and presidents around the world, there, 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 there is a, a particular kind of, um, of um, you know, behavior. Our America and the rest of the democratic um, developed world um, um, operate. It's different from how we operate here in Jamaica. And I must say in all honesty, and the labor rights, and we have a little tizzy about this, that probably Andrew Oles is the, is the first prime minister to behave the way he does. <clears throat> Forgive me, the true thing. When, when, when America elects a new president, and you have a, you have a transition period. Um, I mean, the 2020 election transition period was really one of a kind because of Trump not accepting that he lost the election and 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 not going to not welcoming Biden to the White House, not doing the things that he's he's supposed to do in terms of facilitating the transition from one president to the next it's a it's a whole humongous thing it's it's huge <clears throat> because there are maybe about 3000 job turnovers and all kind of thing and the country has to keep running so there is um, um, defense matter there is budget matter there is all kind of things that just that both of them need to talk to each other in order for that to happen smoothly uh, going into a new administration but apart from that over the years, 
All right, America have had now 46 presidents. And from as early as um, 19, from as early, I'm not going to go to here, from as early as Harry Truman. Harry Truman was a president that I believe fought the, the Japanese war. Yes, and him was the atomic bomb thing and all of that. From as early as Truman, when a, a new president is in the office, the that new president always call on the the, the knowledge and, and 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 the experience of his predecessor. It, it it has become tradition. It has become tradition to a point where, for example, when um when when um hurricane um um down at Louisiana, the Katrina, Bush called upon you know Clinton and and, and um. That and, and his daddy and other people to to help him, you know, to represent him, to do things for him. There are also times when the president of the United States um, asks the other ex-presidents to, you know, go represent him somewhere. Most times it, it, it's quiet, you, you, you don't hear about it, but it happens. And sometimes it's not so quiet. Not only in negotiations, uh, but sometimes state funerals for somebody abroad or something happening abroad that the president could send an ex-president to. And um, there is a second, there is a there is a, a Air Force One plane that is provided for those ex-presidents to to go do things for the current president. It's a tradition. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gentlemanly thing, and it's a and it's a, it's good because it's good for democracy. Uh, that, that's my suspicion that the Americans do it because it's good for democracy. And I also remember that um, the Haiti thing, which is why I'm bringing it up because of the, this CARICOM meeting was about Haiti. I remember the, when the, the, the one, there, was a, there was a Haiti crisis that, that um, Obama put Clinton in charge of, Bill Clinton. And um, I also know, um, based on what has been said in public and what is there for, for public consumption, that the presidents always call on each other. The only president in living memory who never ever called the other ex-presidents and asked them for advice or invite them over for a, for a drink and say, Come help me talk about this because this problem is bad. Was was Trump, but then Trump Trump is a, a unique fellow, <laughs> you know. But the presidents them 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 link together and them and them talk and them reach out to each other. It's a good thing. In Jamaica, um, P. J. Patterson did it. P. J. Patterson did it with with, with Siaga. Reach out to him for for some things. Them talk about certain things. Invite him to certain meetings, call on his advice, and that, that P, um, see, I could give PJ any advice. But PJ did it because it's good for the country and it's good for our democracy. There are certain things international. I mean, you're not going to invite your ex-prime um, minister to come talk to you about the cabinet matters, but things of international interest to the country. You would invite the ex-prime minister or the ex-leader of, 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 of the party, of your former party or, or a part, your, op your opposing party, and say, listen, there's this problem we're facing and, you know, I'd like to get your take on it. PJ did it. Portia did it. Portia, as far as we know, had many meetings with Siaga, get some insights from him and, and, and some advice from him about things. I mean, she never invite him to cabinet meeting or not like that, but she got to him and talked to him about things. You know, and all of that. Michael Manley did it. Michael Manley did it also. Um, reach out to, to I don't know if Bruce Golden did it. I don't have no 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 evidence that he did. But of all the prime ministers, Andrew Olness have been the lone prime minister who stands alone. Not inviting nobody to nothing, not not involving nobody to nothing. I don't think him only I don't think he has ever held a conversation with Peter Phillips. I don't even know if Andrew Owens has ever visited Peter Phillips at home um, since he got sick and, and, and hold a conversation with him and ask him how he's doing and how he's managing with him with the medication and if there's anything he can do. I, I, I don't think so. I hope there has been and I hope I am wrong about this, but I'm speaking from a point of view of not knowing. Huh? And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing it up and why I say I, I don't know will be made clear to you very shortly. So I don't know that. I don't know if, if, if Andrew Wallace ever reached out to PJ on an international matter and say, you were there longer than me. You know some of these people better than me. You were maneuvering some of this better than me. 
what what you take on this i don't know if he has from all knowledge that i have he has never done anything like that i have said it before that andrew oldness is a man that lived deep within himself he is his own um kitchen cabinet he is his own personal advisor him um and and leaders like 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 andrew oldness in the end um will not be successful because of how he is he might appear to be successful but then um not be possible because most of andrew oldness building of relationship has been people outside of jamaica leaders outside of jamaica but he has not built any relationship with the leaders and the past leaders inside of jamaica former prime ministers former party leaders of the other party or or so on i don't know what the relationship in, is with him and bruce i would imagine that might be good but certainly not from the opposition side i don't believe he has ever sought any advice the reason i'm saying this is simple now let me state from the beginning I wouldn't invite Mark Golden to anything, anything at all, involving Jamaica's democracy or Jamaica's Jamaica's role in the world, because Mark is a dimwit, don't understand anything at all. But should, it should, if I was the prime minister of this country, and the CARICOM heads of government is having a CARICOM meeting to look at the security and the and the dis and the and the unstable thing, the unstable the unstable atmosphere down in Haiti. If I was a prime minister, I would invite the leader of the opposition. I would invite the leader of the opposition to come sit into the meeting, and I would so that he can abreast himself of what happening in Haiti. You know, she, you know, stay a secret with him. You know, invite him to cabinet meeting, because at this CARICOM meeting there were people who are not from CARICOM. There was a Secretary of State for the United States, Anthony Blinken, who was present there. I would imagine that the French, who have been the occupiers of Haiti for hundreds and hundreds of years, I would imagine that they also had a representative. I, I don't believe that Macron came, but if Macron didn't come, he probably send somebody or he asked the French ambassador here in Kingston to, to attend. I am just imagining that everybody who have a stake in the stability of Haiti would have been present. And so it is within that context that I would say, um, as, as prime minister, I would invite the leader of the opposition just to show unity on the front of Jamaica in terms of how Jamaica wants to help and, um, and, 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 and be a gentleman about it because it, 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 is, it is a tradition and um, on certain international events, you should involve the opposition. Not that Mark is much of our opposition, but um, if I was the prime minister, I would have invited him. And I, I gather he was not um, in, in, in invited. And Andrew always does seek advice or consultation with his predecessors. Um, and in, in that case, I would say to the prime minister, I know the Labour Assembly have a fits about this, but you know, you know, have to learn to accept the balance that, you know, say, that I give. You know, can't accept the balance when it when it when suit you and the balance when, and don't accept it when it don't suit you. Because if this is what Andrew Oles does, then it's visionless and selfish and lacks a degree of commitment um, to Jamaica. Yeah? Now Peter Phillips, um Mark Golden might not be the, the kind of person you'd want to invite to something like that, yes. But um for better or for worse. He is the current leader of the opposition. In the WhatsApp leak that um, was uncovered and made public, Mark Golden was one of them who instructed his team of RISE MPs at the time, Dayton Campbell and, 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 and um, what I mean, um, Fenton Ferguson and the one from the Southeast and Catherine Fagan, and, and Ian Ears and all of them. Mark was the one in the WhatsApp leak, and I'm going to try and see if I can include the WhatsApp leak, that passage on this voice note, who instructed all his rise MPs not to participate in any of the discussions being held with Peter Phillips. In that, in that WhatsApp leak, he told them that they should just attend the meetings, say nothing, agree with everything that Peter Phillips said and was saying and proposing, but don't offer any ad advice, don't make any suggestions or share any ideas but agree with everything. Mark Golden was the one who said that in the WhatsApp league. 
Then after they did that, and do what Mark instructed them to do, they go, they went out in the public and criticized what Peter Phillips was suggesting. And then they till, tell the media that they, they did not agree. So now, on that, on the, on, on, in the background of that, maybe that is some of the reasons why Andrew Owens don't invite Mark to anything. Because next year, you know, you invite him to the Haiti meeting and the, the Jamaican government agree on something with the rest of CARICOM and all the other governments present. And then Mark would stay there and shake him head and yeah, and then go out or say, disagree with the prime minister. Maybe that's the reason that he was not um, invited. I wish, I wish that um, when we, when we think and when we, when we, when our leaders decide to, when our leaders are called upon to play a part in, um, in our world politics, I wish, just for the sake of this country, that there could be trust among them, that they could include the opposition in some of the things. But I understand the position of Andrew Wallace and the government, but because Mark Wallace cannot be trusted. So I might sound like I am backing up and, and, and backing off. I don't know. I'm speaking from two sides. I'm speaking that if I was the prime minister, I would invite him. But I'm also speaking that if I was the prime minister, I wouldn't trust him. And, um, and, and there you have it. But my heart tells me that um, Andrew Owens don't include um, them in anything. And um, I don't know if it's a trust issue or it's just a, a, a lack of class on the part of uh, Andrew Owens. Maybe Andrew Owens is embarrassed by Mark because Mark, him talk like a corner boy and a thug, you know, and um, that might be, be, be a put off how he talks and how he acts. And um, I'm sure the entire world have seen him in motion. So I don't know, but I'm feeling sad about it. I am, which is why I'm starting with it. I'm feeling sad that a CARICOM heads of government meeting could have been held with lots of people outside of CARICOM attending that meeting and the leader of the opposition. Um, would not have been invited because um, because of a matter of trust. And, and, and that's just um, where I see it, you know. So um, I hope that um, this, 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 this might not continue. I hope so, you know. So that, 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 that is basically what I want to say um, about that. Now... Why am I doing this analysis of a couple of places? The analysis is necessary. It is, it, it is necessary um, because everybody's getting ahead of themselves and people start to get animated about what is possible and what is not. And I know for a fact that Maureen Weber would look at these numbers, but she don't like share information. And that's one of the problems with PMP. Them don't like to share information with the public, especially the PMP public, to make them understand what is what so that people can decide for themselves what, what they're doing. It's also important to do this analysis of these um, couple of divisions because it's still pain me, and I've spoken to a few people outside of Jamaica, particularly the U.S. and Britain and Canada. Spoke to a, to a, I spoke to a friend of mine on Saturday um, in Australia. And um, the world is watching how, how the Jamaican opposition, People's National Party, have basically turned Jamaica into an election-denying country where they have not accepted the results of a legitimately free and fair-held local government elections where they lost, where the government got seven um, municipalities the PMP got five municipalities. The PMP got the mayorship of Portmore, which is not a municipality. And uh, the Kingston St. Andrew Corporation is tied. Now, for those who never believed that it was tied before, you must have seen the swearing-in ceremony at the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation. Uh, I think that was Thursday last week. And um, at that swearing-in ceremony, you must have seen that the PMP that, that a mayor was sworn in from the PMP side, and a deputy mayor was sworn in from the from the GLP side. That is what you call a tie. That's what a tie looks like. Twenty seats apiece, and it's not it is not popular votes 
that win um, elections. It is local government elections. It is seat count. Well, both elections, really. But the seat count. It, it is seat count. It is who get the most seats. Um, that, that is what um, determines who controls a municipality or who does not. Now, I have to ask myself a couple of questions before I go into this um, analysis. I don't believe there has ever been a time in this country where a government call a local government elections with the sole purpose and desire, not only because it was overdue, because I'm sure he could have found ways to put it off again and Mark Golden said he was going to sue him and that would have taken what, two or three more years and so he would have, a, and Jones would have had a legitimate reason for not calling it because it's in the courts. So I'm sure he, Mr. Owens could have um, um, postponed it again. So I, I, am, I am left to only um, 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 so, um, organize in my head that this was um, a local government election that he had one particular reason to call. And that particular reason is he wanted to see where he's at with the voting electorate of this country. And it, 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 it re that fact reinforces something that Andrew Oldest did and was doing since the last, the last poll was showing him losing ground and he went on a, an all-island tour, not like Mark Golding. He went, he picked certain constituencies and went into some places and um, to find out where he's at and how him stay and how him people them stay. And he came out of that clearly with a decision that, all right, him not think him too bad in the local government area, so I'm going to call it and see what happened. Um, and he did. We are going to talk a little bit more as to why Andrew Oldness was not campaigning as as vigorous as he should have and what we what we observed and I think I know the reason why now. So no government has ever called a local government election to find out where they are with the electorate before they go into a local government elections. But I think Mr. Oldness also recognized that the voters are demoralized and, and, and they are cynical of our political process and its purpose. And I'm sure Mr. Mr. Holness realized that our leaders are to be blamed for this. And if you don't believe that they are demoralized and cynical of the political purpose and process uh, of, of our politics, then think about this. 71% of the country stayed away from the general um, election that Mark was running. Because Mark was running a general election. Mark's strategy was to rile up the country in a general election type of way and get them to come out, come vote out, bro God. That was Mark's message and entire um, strategy. Just talk about getting rid of the wicked, um, uncaring government and one and two times him throughout the world, bro God. I want you to remember me saying this because I want to reach further down in this. You're going to have to um, get the point what I'm saying to you, why Mark kept it at that. There was a particular reason why Mark kept it right there, so you know. Um, so Mark was on the general election um, campaign, and in spite of how the country, by and large, was not feeling confident in Andrew Oldness, even his own supporters, he was losing people based on the last poll. And not only the poll, you could feel it in the air. I have a video. I have a video, an election day video, that I videotape a young fellow right out there, out of the road, so where we were election um, day. In the evening, when, when, I, when, I, when we came back and election almost closed off, I videotape a youth who I saw earlier in full PMP Patrick Roberts orange garb. And this youth is a laborite. I mean, I talk about just any ordinary laborite. He was a laborite. Big, big laborite. He was a party promoter. Very close to my daughter, very close when she was into party promoting. The two of them, I don't think both of them, none of them doing party promoting anymore. But this youth is a laborite. Let me tell you the extent to which he's a laborite. When we into at election, him was one of those who joined the, the, the line of voters in, one, in, in the strongest PMP PDs. Him and one next fellow would come and they would join the line to hold up PMP votes. 
And then I would go in and stand up in front of them in the line. And get the PMP voters them get for skip or tell them behind me them can go ahead now. Of course, them now go them come out of the line because <laughs> tricks in trade, you know. So that's how much of a labor right him is. But here it was election day in full orange garb, full Patrick Roberts garb. And I was I was flabbergasted, I was floored. So I call him. I'm gonna say, what what boss and what? What mm? I'm start talking. I'm gonna say, hold on, I'm gonna video you attack. And I'm say, all right, and I'm stop. I think I have, two, uh, I have two snippets of him talking about why. One of these days I will share it with, with, with you guys at an appropriate time when I'm talking about something that requires me showing it. I will, I, I will, I, I will show it to you. But there is clear signs that they, there are some clear signs that the that the Andrew Wallace support base and in even his own party was in doubt, and so he thought that after his little tour around the country. He had to go out and uh, go call the local government election and make the chips fall where they may. And that would help set him up um, to know what he needs to do going into a general election. If he went into the local government election under the notion that he's down a little bit, no matter how much he has lost, and no matter the 70,000 votes that um, extra that the PMP got, if I was in Mr. Olness's position, I would feel pretty good about where I am. I would. Um, but then, the PNP should also fe feel pretty good. But in this ripe political climate, with a government that no longer enjoys the full trust of the people, Mark Golden should have been able to carry the PNP to a decisive win. The, 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 the KSAC was a was a fluke. I am sorry, but um, the PMP people might feel bad about this, but it was a fluke. And it was a fluke that was caused by Mrs. Wallace herself. Because uh, I'm going to get to um, Mrs. Wallace at some point, but Mrs. Wallace was acting out the same playbook that Bunting, Mark, and, Go uh, uh, and Dayton Campbell and, and them acted out in 2020. 2019, 2018, 2019, 2020. The same playbook Mrs. Olness is doing. Mrs. Olness, I suspect, wants to be leader of her party after her husband. I also suspect that she has some people who are supporting her and she has some people who are vigorously against her. And I say that with gusto because there are more people who are vigorously against her than there are who are supporting her. And Mrs. Olness adopted bunting them playbook the machiavellia playbook where she set out to destroy some people who she think not going to support her and she specifically went after um the young lady that took away bunting seat specifically went after Ro rhoda moy crawford some people say it's because rhoda moy crawford is the side chick and she went after her now i don't have no evidence of that and um, I, I don't like them kind of rumor there eh? with, with, um, with uh, you know, you don't, have to, you don't have to sit with me, you know. If Mark Golden was, and I tell you this, and why you listen to me very carefully. If Mark Golden was prime minister of this country, God help us, Jesus, please don't let me speak that into being. If Mark Golden was prime minister of this country, no matter how I feel about him, I would treat him with the same respect that I treat Andrew Olness. Because I think those pos is not the man, is the position that needs to be treated with utmost of respect. And if I love my country the way I love my country, I must recognize that the positions that the, 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 the prime minister, the, the, the governor general, those positions, these are people who represent the country. And you should, you know, treat and the, and the people elect them and you should treat them with a little bit of, with, with, a, with a whole lot of respect. So I would have. You know, but so I try not to to go too far in in classing Mr. Mr. Wallace in any kind of derogatory way, um, because he is the prime minister of the country, and that's all there is to it. There's nothing else more to it. His wife, Mrs. Wallace, would enjoy the same kind of respect from me. So even when she became leader, um, president, um, speaker of the house, and some people was making fuss. I stayed away from that because I feel that 
she's a member of parliament and as a member of parliament she's entitled to vie for a position in the parliament just like everybody else i mean she was elected by the, the people the good people of eastern east rural st andrew and as such she have a right to offer herself for any kind of leadership position in the parliament no matter how you feel about her and what people think that she has done or she's doing and not doing so therefore i stayed away from kind of criticizing Mrs. Olney. So this whole side chick thing, I am not getting involved in that. But she clearly went after Rhoda Crawford, Rhoda Moy Crawford, in terms of wanting her to lose some of her council seats. And she went after a couple more people. She did. And then it is, it is, it is the same result, the same thing that Bunting them did. She got almost the same result. She almost lo lost the seat in Mavis Bank. I mean, I mean when the, she won the seat by 32 votes. She must have been quite shaken by that. And then she lost the seat up in Kentire. Now that should have sha um, must have shaken her up quite a bit. Because she, she up and around the country doing all kind of things, involving in all kind of something. And I'm not going to talk about those things yet. But it is those things that led her to almost lose one seat and lost one so I'm, i i don't know if she's going to learn any lesson from bunting the machiavellian behavior and um go back to the drawing board or she's going to continue like they did you know because it was what they did that led the pmp to lose so many seats in 2020 but not only that led dayton camera to lose his colin fagan to lose paul robertson seat well dayton camera to lose Birchell whiteman seat Colin Fagan to lose Paul Robertson's seat uh, 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 and, and, and Bunting lose John Junior's seat. And um, he, uh, Ian has lost his Ben Clear seat and Luther Buchanan lost PJ's seat. All of that was a ripple effect of what they were doing. And Mrs. Olness decided to go try it out um, um, by herself to see if she can get um, some, some results. To get rid of some people that she don't want. I hope for the sake of this country. That Mrs. Wallace draw breaks. And take stock. Of um, who she's trying to destroy. And what she's trying to do. To get back to people for one reason or the other. Or for people not supporting you. People not supporting you. And they're not supporting you. Go find the people who are supporting you. And work with them people. Eh? You know? Pardon me. But in this ripe. Political. Climate to topple a government who no longer enjoys the trust of the majority of the people. Mr. Wall is still have a good support base in the Jamaica Labour Party, but the Jamaica Labour Party support base was not, was not what elected him to government. It was the wider Jamaica that elected him to government. And that wider Jamaica, some of them have been turned off and have no trust in him anymore. But we can't say that with surety because even with that existing, Mark Golden could not deliver a victory for the PMP. He could not deliver a precise, a concise, a decisive victory. Ten council, eleven council, because this is a political climate that we are in. He couldn't do it. Which means that a good amount of people in this country who might still be upset with Mr. Holness, still learn nothing with Mark Golden. And it's not the PMP. It's not the PMP. People would easily make the switch to the PMP. Easily. But it's the leader they're looking at. It's the people who are leading it they're looking at. And I asked a good um, friend of mine the other day, how did this happen? I said to him, I said, you tell me. You're a lawyer. You're a businessman. How did this happen? And his answer to me was simple. He said, because the man they were on the party are businessmen. The man a politician. They are businessmen. And it is that one statement that put everything into perspective for me going forward. And the next live I do, I do I'm going to tell you why it did. All right? But the voters did not buy the argument that Brogard must go. The PMP base stayed home. And the PMP base never just stay home because they don't feel like going out to vote. I am going to take a victory lap 
and I'm going to say that a majority of the PMP base stayed home because they were listening to us. They were listening to the resistance. They heard us loud and clear. They saw the evidence of what we were talking about. And they listened. And when I touch base with, that's why it takes a long time to do this voice note uh, and get this thing together. When I touch base with people, they tell me people stayed home because Dayton Campbell and Scotty and Peter Bunting and Ian Yells and all of them, they were there trying to push people on people. And they were there living out everything that we were telling the voters, everything that we were telling the PMP voters. So they stayed home. And my experience with voters is that if they showed up the last time, they would probably show up the next time. If they don't show up the last time, chances are they might not show up the next time. Something would have to drastically change. Like PMP get Lisa and after them leader. Yeah. That something would have to be drastically changed to get that PMP base out. Because Mark Golden, I tell you this, and I'm not making any election um, uh, prediction, but Mark Golden will not be able to bring out the PMP base in a general election. He couldn't do it in a local government election. He's not going to be able to do it in a general election. No matter how they paint it, no matter what them, how they pretty it up. What the PMP numbers are showing are pre-2020 number. This is what the PMP numbers would look like um, in, a, in a local government election, yes. Because there was no sabotage. Nobody wasn't sabotaging anybody. Some risers lose, and we are rejoicing that they did. Some authentic PMP lose too. I uh, never know if they were authentic, yes or no. Maybe they were just saying that they are authentic PMP because the Mawa would beat them up. We suspect that a great number of them was doing that. Um, but most authentic PMP won. A whole heap of risers lose. When, when Mark Golden was down by Church Pen talking about the Mark Golden train that no, no, we're not there, pan, and if we don't want to come, pan, it, we can stay because him no need we. It was done by a division. We're rewarding a riser who supported him with that division, and she lost. Poetic justice. Poetic, she's not on the train now, because she lost. So I, I don't know if she can go on. Well, I don't know if she can stay on the train, because she lost. I don't know if she if you know, uh, there's a new leader in town now, me and a new sheriff, the whole one must know, follow behind me, if you know, follow behind me, and come on the train, go on about the business, but you can't do without her. Well, she lost the seat. She lost the seat. But, so, on one side, there is that. On the other side, the young Miss Downing, Ocho Rios, who the PMP workers then boycott, and never go to work for her, nor vote for her, she never did so badly. She never did so badly, because some people come out and say they want to get rid of Brogard. Had she had the PMP workers and the PMP base with her, she could have won too. What a, what a disaster that would have been. Because most of those new councillors, those risers that, that won, will not survive after the, the four years, which is week after next. They've never survived this. Because they never earned it. It wasn't theirs. They got it by default. Because some people came out to vote against Brogard. And I want to ribbit that in them head. So it's up to them whether they're going to go build a base to win back. Or they're going to stay there believing that people are going to come out for them. And then they lose the seat again. And we're back to where we are. But this is what it looks like when, they are, when there's no sabotage. This is what it looks like when there's no sabotage. Mark Golden and his crew are delusional to believe that they did well in the elections. And I'm going to talk about that on the live. And we have to do a live for that. I promise you, there has to be a live for that. That can't be a voice, a voice video. There has to be a live. But what they have done most effectively is corrupt the mind of good PMP comrades to make them believe that they won. Yeah, they are. I was over by Digicel or by the gas station. Um, when it was, I think, I believe it was um, Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. I, I went there to ask the young lady to show me how to transfer things to the to the SD card so that I can have space on my phone. And and saw a good PMP I know from Naga Marvel. Grew up with them people there. Eh? In our PMP garb, same way. I'm saying, no, so we'll lose, why? No, no, we'll win. Well, me not a PhD in mine because she used to go to Marvel school. She has never been very bright. So there we go. <laughs> there we go. Me not bother with that. Yeah, couldn't bother. Mm-mm. Can't bother. Because 
should have verb right. So, I think she'd be able to get a reader, right? But what can I say? <clears throat> now, once Mark Golin could not deliver this decisive victory to the PMP, he should have been removed. He should have done the decent thing and, and step aside. But he is there deluding himself that he won something or he did something great. Or he did well. Because some people in there tell him, say, him did well. Some people don't want to talk about, we did well. And me don't know me and them think differently. Because my, my idea of doing well is winning. And that is, uh, you never win, so I don't know how you call we are um, not winning doing well. You tie in the case, you see. Um, I don't know how you call that do, doing well. I really don't know. Somebody forgot to explain that to me in, in like I'm a five-year-old. You know, you have to explain to me in a basic language, basic school language. So there's that delusion. But he's not going to be removed. But they're not going to remove him. Nobody. Because what they have done is change the constitution to say, <laughs> boy, I'm telling you, it is far, far more um, um sinister and dangerous that, that we could ever imagine uh, uh, about oh Mark Golden and and, and 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 his ego and his collaborators, you know, and the them the, the, and the ethical plank where them have to move on to is that it, it, the fear him of a face the electorate and him face the electorate and him fail. Him face the electorate and he failed. But in anticipation of that failure, in anticipation of that failure, because there's only reason to, to come to the conclusion that they put this thing in the constitution that him cannot be challenged until him go to a general election. It must have been the anticipation of failure in the local government election that would lead to that, um, um, putting that into the constitution. It must be. So in anticipation of that failure to make a good and proper showing in the, in the local government election by winning, they change the constitution. But I'm here to tell them that you can change the constitution. You can change the constitution all you like. But you can't change the reality. You can't change the political reality in the country on the ground, in the PMP corners. You can't change that political reality. But you can change the constitution. How people feel in general about the country and their lives and how things are with them and they blame the government for it is different as against how they feel about Mark Golding. And based on these election results and the inability for a decisive victory for the PMP, it is clear that the two things not matching up. They feel a little way about Andrew Oldness and how the country is and how the things are going in their lives. They feel a little way about that. But them don't feel that bigger way to the fact that they may want to throw out Andrew Oldness. So in two or three weeks' time, when the young people them and the other people them who got up and go vote against, get vote against um, and um, vote for PMP candidate, in anticipation of getting rid of Bogart. When them wake up, um, una forgo, um, me don't know. Una forgo, <laughs> una forgo, me don't know what I tell them. It, 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 it baffles me every day as to what exactly una go, una plan and, 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 and uh, I'm telling them. So una in there, very delusional. It's kind of like the, there's a saying that the inmates have taken control of the asylum. And that's uno. And so, una reading this thing wrong. And I, I want to be on record to say these things. That you know, reading these things wrong in terms of what happened um, February 2024. 20, 20, I want to look at Central St. Mary. Let's look at Central St. Mary. In the Islington Division in 2016, the PMP got 1,492 votes. In um, 2012, in the Islington Division, I'm, I, I'm trying to find it because I don't want to make no mistake. In 2012, PMP got 1,789 votes. In 2016, 
the PMP got 1492. And in 2024, the PMP got 1437. So the PMP lost 55 votes between 2016 and 2017. And if you add the 2012 number to it, the PMP lost maybe over 200 and something votes. <laughs> now watch me. Listen to me carefully. The GLP in 2016 got 1,438 votes. In 2016, the GLP got 1,438 votes. Huh? That's 2016. In 2012, they got 1,500 votes. So they upped the vote in 2012. In 2024, the, P the GLP got... 1,350 votes. So the GLP lost 88 votes from their 2012 numbers. But the PMP never get it. You get a message, Uno? The PMP never get those votes. So it, it comes back to everything that we have been saying. Could it be that people dead or migrate or move? But none of the parties have any idea who the new voters are. Nobody. No party don't have no 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 the, who, who the voters. They are very specific and, and 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 small amount of constituencies that pay attention to the to the to the um, enumeration numbers. You know? But what most of them do is just they get the numbers from the electoral office. They accept the numbers from the electoral office, but they have no idea how those numbers were constructed or what caused um, are, are the people are who the people are they don't know so there we have it in 2026 in port maria the pmp got 1594 votes in 2016 was it let me let me just double check i don't want to I'll give you no bad numbers we're going we're going straight for the good numbers in 2016 the pmp got 1594 in 2012 the pmp got 1962 Port Maria, 1554, 1962. 1962 was a great year. And then get 50, and then in 2024, the PMP got 1651. So therefore, the PMP increased by 57 votes. And the JLP polled 1540 in 2024. In 2016, in Port Maria, the JLP to, um, polled um, 1,812 votes. They lost 272 votes, but none of them went to the PMP. Not one. The 57 votes up that the PMP got in Port Maria in 2024, um, in 2024 could only be um, attributed to the fact that people come out to vote against Brogard because the, the GLP lost 272 votes, which means that the PMP should have won by about 300 or something votes, which would say that these votes gone from them to, to, to us. Huh? So there you go. A loss of 272 votes and um, nobody ever get them. So where are they? This trend of voters... Of, of the GLP losing voters and the PMP not getting them, this trend falls right in line with Mark Gold in poll numbers, where he loses votes while Mr. Oldis also loses, but Mark not getting any of those votes. Remember the polls? Huh? The 13.14.7% uh, where he lost three point three and a half PMP points PMP votes, and Mr. Oldis lost votes, but him not getting none. Well, that is, be, that is borne out in these 2024 numbers right across the country. I mean, I'm not assessing all of them, but I went through all of them. It is borne out right across the country where the GLP lost votes. Even divisions that the PMP won. Let's just take out Anova out of it. But even divisions that the PMP won. And we shouldn't take out Anova out of it now because Anova is a strange place, but we've got the whole thing about Anova alone. The GLP lost votes, the PMP gained votes, but not compared, comparing to what the GLP lost. 
him not getting none of those votes. And that is the dis disturbing, that is the disturbing thing about those, those numbers. And I'm going to go through all uh, of St. Mary, but I want to, the swing voters, the swing voters in Western St. Mary, I don't know what them, what them up to, because um, the, 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 the PMP got like 448 votes more um, than they did in, in, in 2016, in 2014 than they did in 2016 in Arakabesa, as the St. Mary people call it, Arakabesa. And uh, the GLP lost 178 votes. Um, those are just basically swing voters, apart from the voters who came out to vote out Brogard, which is, by and large, a very small number. But Rakabesa is clearly a swing voter um, 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 division. And um, Bosco Bill is basically the same thing, too. You know, uh, BMP got 279 more votes in, than they, in, 20, in 2024 that they got. In, in, in 20 in 2016 uh, um, and it is the same number that the GLP got in 2016 that has now gone over to the PMP um, by and large of course about 20 or so votes less swing voters are running rampant in Western um, St. Mary retreat is one of those division that has no that has had no counselors for, for four years Crystal Lee was a counselor she left and got an MP somewhere else and Mark Golden named a PMP candidate to retreat from 2020. Named her because she supported him. Not because she was a good candidate, not because she's doing the work, not because nobody thinks she can win. Him just named her because she was a riser and she supported him wholeheartedly. I remember on the resistance to a buck up in her, a boy her face sour. If I had known at the time that she was the PMP candidate um, for the retreat division, you have no idea what kind of what kind of trouble I would have caused. I mean, the woman feels so uh, against us, the resistance. Now, this is somebody who's going to represent the party to try to get votes to come out for her uh, whenever the local government election is called. And she, she will roll in her area and she uh, and she have found and a fuss and a go on. It's because I'm not, a, me, me not a person who goes in a rogue war with PMP people. But had I known she was a candidate at the time, um, the, the, the resistance people over in St. Mary really fell down on that one because I never knew she was a candidate. But she has been a candidate for four years and a day that day she go in. She didn't have no social media presence. She didn't have no workers. She had about three people that walk up and down behind her. No work without a counselor. Now try and imagine it. Uno PMP people. Try and imagine it. Mark Golden gave her the seat from 2020 because she supported him. And she asked to make him run, make sure run. And he said, yeah, take it. Because I saw him operate. He was a thug. Huh? And Crystal League and turn MP. The people of retreat has no counselor. None. And she is a candidate for the PMP. And she couldn't make a dent. She couldn't even, not even the people them who have voted against Bogard came out for her. Not even them, because the PMP lost 242 votes. Oh, the retreat is like a casino. Retreat is, is like one of that, that Donald Trump casino, where, I mean, in gambling, the house always wins. In, in a casino, the house always wins. The house can't lose. But in, in, in Trump, them casino, he was losing money, and that was kind of strange how you lose money in a gambling. But that's what retreat is, kind of a casino. Had no counselor. No council at all. And she get the council seat for four years. And lost 242 of the PMP votes that they had in 2016. Not even them that she couldn't keep. I want not talk about Mark Golden did well. I want not talk about Mark Golden this and Mark Golden that. In spite of my own issues with Mark Golden, there are a lot of people that went out to support him. A lot of people who don't like him. A lot of people who don't nothing with him. A lot of people who don't like him being leader. A lot of people who, who know that him is a traitor and a Judas. And for them, it was more important for them party than them country. I mean, not beating them up. Everybody have to make their own choice about what they did. Good people. Good comrades, comrades that I love. Friends, even some of them I called. And they decided that they're going to put aside their differences and go work to make the PMP 
um, win the local government elections. And that never helped. They gave up love of country for love of party. You know, because their argument was simple. We have to get to the Andrew Wallace, the boy Karen me tell man. We have to get to the Andrew Wallace, man. We can work with the thing, man, and get to the Andrew Wallace. And my argument remains the same. I would love for us to get rid of Andrew Owens, but Mark Golden would be worst. And I have to protect my grandson and my great grandchildren whenever they come along. And I have a responsibility toward my country, where that is a greater responsibility than the party. Much greater responsibility. And I can't do it. I just couldn't go out there and tell the Jamaican people to vote for this man. Going out to tell the Jamaican people to vote to make this man have power. Is like looking at Judas after him come out of the, the last supper with Jesus, plunging him back with him 30 pieces of silver. And we stop him halfway out the door and we say, Yo, Judas, no matter go away on yourself, man. Oh, land man, we'll give you the seat. Take the council seat. You win, we'll turn you in a mirror. There you go. That is what it looks like to me. So I couldn't do it. But a lot of people sacrifice their own integrity to go out there, go campaign for Mark Golden to win. My campaign was simple. I want the authentic PMP them who work hard for them seat, who love them party, who serve them people. It's them me campaign for win back them seat. People like Andrew Swaby, people like Shami and Daniels. Them people there eh, want to win back them seat. And I'm glad so over the moon that we got back the PMP seats from um, Trafalgar and Papin. That is a good deal. Yeah? I can't tell yet if Jesse James and Darrington Ferguson are going to be good representatives for the people or their win was just a show me win to make sure we get rid of Venetia and get rid of Carrie. I don't know if that it is. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to fear off. I have a feeling that Jesse James is going to be a good representative. I have a feeling. I don't know about Darrington. I don't know that well about him. But let's look at Gail. In Gail... The PMP got 1,452 seats as against what we got, 1,000 in 2016. Is 1,000, 1,009? Uh, I better check this right. Um, I better check this right. Let me go back to Gale because I want to be absolutely certain in, in, in Gale. In, in Gale in 2012, the PMP got um, 929 vote. In 2012, we get 1519. In 2016, we get 1009. And um, and now, in um, in 2024, we got um, 1452 votes. It's a whole of votes up. And um, the GLP got um, 1405. So, Mr. Giovanni Byfield won by 47 votes. And um, my, my, my word of advice to Giovanni Byfield... Stop trying to set up Comrade Basco and all them little shenanigans that we are going with because you want the seat. If I were you, I'd pay attention to the girl, to the girl seat that you absolutely didn't deserve winning. And um, it's a, as I say, it's a fluke. All that is a fluke too. And um, you better enjoy it and do your best for the people of Gale. You should stop spending your time being a spy and a double agent and go spend your time trying to work the seat. And, and make your council proud and make the people of Gail proud. If not, I'll be here, right in the right here, waiting for knock you over. Because you're a traitor and a Judas and a wicked and devious minded little fellow. And wicked and devious minded people must not go unchecked. And in my mind, you are not going unchecked. So Gail is a classic example of the unreliability of swing voters. Those who don't commit themselves one way or the other um, to anyone. Now, Karen all kind of su um, surprised me. Karen all surprised me because the PMP candidate down there was, was saying him have everything, him have him got everything going and everything was going right. I never speak to him, but he spoke to other people in the resistance. And he was telling everybody when I asked him about Karen all, he said, yeah, my little you say him have all the money, need him, rain, rain, blah, blah, all the rest of it. But yet... He could only muster 571 votes. Um, him lose so many votes. Him, why? Him lose about 318 votes on the PMP. The PMP got 600. He could even keep the 613. I don't know. I, I we have to we, we have to have a deep look into these people, the candidates who they who they who they are, who they were, those who those who who, who, who never win. 
Now in uh, 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 I'm not going through Richmond and and Castleton. I mean, I'm not going through those, you know. But um, Belfield, the PMP added 72 votes, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing that the PMP added um, 72 votes. But um, in adding 72 votes, the GLP lost barely, barely what? Um, about, GLP lost about 25 votes. So it's a big thing for, 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 for Belfield. But I want to um, touch on the most important constituency and probably the most important division in St. Mary, all of St. Mary. And that is the Anatabia division. All right? Now, Anatabia division, according to Harry Douglas, Harry Douglas, they say, Anatabia people, they're not going to go out, sir. They're not going to go out, sir. You have to know them. Who are going for them? You have to know them. You have to make sure you're going for them. You know, Anatabia people, they're not going to go out. You can't rely on them for them. You have to go for them. That's Harry Douglas. That's Harry Douglas. And Harry Douglas was a, a genius MP for South East St. Mary. So, he knew him to talk about them, talk about Anatabia people. I was uncertain about Newt Barclay, the, the candidate of Anata Bay. I have the right idea and, 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 and the right um, profile, but um, I, I don't see Newt as a, as a politician. But as my friend said to me, the man them lose the election because they're a politician, they're a businessman. And I can't wait for the live to explain to you how profound and prolific that is. For you to understand where we are and why we are here now. Yeah, I can't wait to tell you. So, the GLP won the Anata Bay Division. The, the, the GLP won the Anata Bay Division in, in 2007 by 2178, in 2012, 2007, in 2016, 2001, 52. So, um, them, um, them, 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 no, wrong, 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 all of that wrong. In 27, they won it, 2004, Don't listen to what I just said before, how the GLP won and that That was wrong. I'm going to give you the right one now. This is the right one. In 2007, the GLP got 2,481 votes. In 2012, they got 2,112 votes, so they lost some votes. In 2016, them get back the votes that they lost in, 27, in 2007, barring 10 Huh? And then in 2016, in 2016, they got it back. They got it back. They got back the votes that they lost in 2007 um, by that. Now, why is it important? Why am I highlighting Anna to be a for, 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 for two For two reasons. First, the GLP have a steady voting block in Anna to be. Call it what you want, but, you know, it, 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 a steady voting block, about 2,500 votes, the GLP has in Anata Bay, give and take. And as I said, nobody know who enumerate who, but Anata Bay is different. And that is what I want to point out to you in Anata Bay. The PMP candidate in Anata Bay is the only candidate throughout the whole St. Mary that got over 2,000 votes. Everybody else got under 2,000 votes. He is the only candidate with 2,000 plus votes. Mm -hmm. 2,192 votes. The PMP candidate in Anata Bay. 2,192 votes. In 2012, the PMP got 2,178. 2012, 2,712. In 2016, 2,001. 15. That 2,115 number, it kind of match up with the 2,007 number. Those are the, the numbers that adequately describe what the PMP votes are. So the PMP votes, give and take a few, is about 2,120, 125 marks. Huh? Newt got 2,192. The GLP got back all of their votes. These are not new voters for the GLP. These are their voters. 2,359, they lost 112, which is still there because new, now get them, the votes that new got was the protest votes, same way from the, the people who want to get rid of Brogan. The PMP base vote in Anatabay 
Never come out. Never come out. Now I know another beer. Well, I have a whole heap of people out of another beer. Whole heap of girl and boy have, a, uh, have, an, have another beer. And when you look at the PMP PDs them, and the PMP areas them where votes supposed to come out, nobody told Newt as a new candidate that you see them PD here, and you have to line up for go for them. Then now nah, come. Yes, you walk out there, and yes, them tell you them I'm going to vote. Harry Douglas said it all. Well, he's not going to be a people that are come out. You have to go for them. You have to have a plan for them. <laughs> nobody told Newt. Because nobody was going into them. Mark Golden and him crew wasn't running a local government elections where you got to sit down and look at the numbers and say, this is what we need to do. They must have run off away, Mark Golden. I said, I could get rid of this wicked, wicked government. The Jamaica people want me, Mark Jefferson Golden, in Jamaica house. I could get rid of this wicked, wicked government. I said, when I get that live and tell you why I was doing that crap, you see? But anyway, that's what happened in Anatta Bay. And everybody in St. Mary got less, that, less votes than Newt. And Newt lost. Everybody got less votes than Newt. And he lost. And that will be it. Because nobody, none of the candidates, everybody was just going there and saying, boy, the people will want to get to land, you know. Yeah, man. No, it was a hype all across the country. Because that was the, that, that, that was the, the premise on which they were sold. Well, make a candidate, man. People won't get a DN Cambridge said more than once. The people won't get to the Andrew Andrew only so badly that we have to name a candidate. Because the people will come out and vote. So little faith. So little faith in the intelligence of the Jamaican voters. So little faith. Eight percent of those who voted in twenty sixteen didn't show up in twenty twenty four. Then the people don't want to get rid of uh, uh, Andrew Wallace. Whether them be GLP or PMP, them never, them never depend on that agenda. Or we could possibly say them and wait for the general election and forget rid of him. Maybe. But maybe we couldn't sell them on the idea that this is a good election to get rid of him because we had a flawed, a flawed strategy, which I told him was risky. But we still run with it. And Newt lost an Atabee and feel funny about it. Now, when I spoke to the people in Anata Bay, they also told me a very strange thing. The people in Anata Bay told me that the election day money for, for Anata Bay didn't come until 5 o'clock. What you hear me now? Them say the money, the election day money for Anata Bay didn't arrive until five o'clock. Now that seemed like a very, very strange thing to me because I whole for people over there. Who was in charge of that money? But then again, even if they didn't get that money, how they would translate that money, transfer that money into votes in light of the fact that them don't know them there because them don't know that they're not a beer. Um, cluster managers say, come in, Karen, I whole for people show up for vote, you know. Well, you see the people where we normally see, then we don't see them the people there. That's the PMP base. And the same thing the cluster manager up at Agli Park, um, at Tarrant, told me. It's the same thing the cluster manager don't do where the park said. It's the same thing all across the country. The cluster managers them saying, yeah, man, who are people show up for voting you know? on? But we don't see some of the regulars there, man. Some people, some people chalk it down to some of the regulars, and some people chalk it down that we don't see the regulars. But some people don't want it sound so bad to them say, we don't see some of the regulars. That's a PNP base who didn't show up for Mark G with G. <laughs> oh, that is Mark G, I'm a G. <laughs> I need what? Can somebody get one of that t-shirt, please? I mean it. Can somebody please get one of that t-shirt? Mark G, I'm a G. Yeah, man, I want one of that. <laughs> um, they didn't show up. So Newt never get the money for election day until 5 o'clock. I, I, well, I don't know if him get it. Because I have to listen to the language that has been spoken to me. We never get the money. The money never come until 5 o'clock. The money never come until 5 o'clock. Now, I did ask who was supposed to send the money and who was supposed to collect the money. Now, that may not get into. But the question is, is this. 
even if the money did come earlier, they would not have known where to spend it. And I'm going to tell you how I know that to be true. So I ask them, we have a list of people who don't know so to go, go up there and give them money and, and come vote because they might need bus fare. So even if they give them a drive, you go for them a vehicle where you have to give them money for taxi fare still. I don't know what I mean. You know, you know, people there. Um, no, um, um, you know, say, um, you know, say, new, new, me don't know, you know, but new supposed to have one of that. <laughs> no, it's serious, but we have to laugh. So remember when we spoke, I, I, I remember which live or a voice to what I did. I said, even if you're gonna buy vote, you have to have a strategy for that too. You have to know who you're going to buy and where them there. So the money never come to the five o'clock and nobody know who they're buy and nobody know where them there. It had a by-election in South East St. Mary. The by-election. Basil Waite and Venetia Phillips was in charge of the money. And that was a dangerous shit. But anyway, we're not going to that. About 4.40. I have 11 votes with me. Right up on the seaside of that there. Across the road. Now I look at Liam. Forget how little Liam need. Liam. The man they were may hang out with for days. And get them for vote. For PMP. Come to me and say. Have some voters there you know. See them my man. I will go some bomb and check the list. And the man and the woman them for the list. And them as they want to do it. They want to do it for the PMP. Because a PMP family. But you know, everybody have an issue. Everybody wants something. So I'm going to call Basil Wheeler. So I'm going to give them people a bus here. So that they can go vote. The man come and a whole conversation with the people in the corner. Um, for me, the t- and I look for him watch. For make sure so the time we are out. Kind of want to give the people the money. So I call the man that I hang out with for days now. Know me. Based on how I deal with them. I call the whole people in one side. And I say to them, say, listen to me. If I get late, I'm going to go and go vote. Ask them man here. Yeah. Trust me man. I'm going to go and go vote. I'm going to start out the bus for your thing. I've been mean, in an argument with Basil. You can't take that one yet because that was in my intention anyway. I'm going to call Julian Robinson. I'm going to say, Julian, I have some voters that are going to vote. They're going to warm up them fear for go back to them yard. So I send them to vote. I'm going to give them a word and a commitment. God help me if I can't fulfill that when they come back. And Julian said, don't worry. And they're going to vote and come back and sit down and wait for me. And Julian send them bus fear and them get it. But that's when voters trust you. That's when voters trust you. When people trust you. So there we have it. St. Mary. Newt got the most vote. And he lost. Just like that. Just like that. Now we're not going into St. Into Anne. In any big way. I want to close this. By telling her. That the big winner. On. February 24th. 24, um, 26, 20, 20, 14. Oh, shit. What's wrong with me? My brain ago. February 26, 2024. That's right. All right. So, the big winner on that day is Lisa Rene Shanti Hannah. She's the big winner. Because in all of St. Anne, Lisa Anna won back her four seats and the PMP win one more seat. Remember who's got the seat there? I'm sorry, I'm not disrespecting the the the, 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 the PMP comrade who won that seat. Um, when when I find out, I will I will put it out for you. But the PMP won one more seat. I think is in Southwest, um, Southwest Saint Anne, and Lisa Hanna won her four um council seats. Ugly line teeth in Lydia. Ta-ta, Lydia. Farewell, Lydia. Goodbye, Lydia. See you, see you on the outskirts of hell. Because I'll see you when I'm passing by. I'm going to ask um, St. Peter for if he can, when, when he can carry me home. Give me a lift. Let me just see you. So I can wave to you on my way to wrap up myself in the arms of Jesus. Lying ugly teeth in Lydia. Another one, Gary Kim. You win back your seat. You win back your seat because Lisa didn't trouble you. Lisa, make your go on. Go win the seat. 
and nobody didn't sabotage you. You see how wonderful that is? E. Gary, you see how wonderful that is? With Lisa on the phone and people calling her and she said, I'm going to go out and vote for the PMP candidate. People are calling her all over and Lisa said, I don't need to go out and vote. She don't call your ugly name in her mouth, you know. Because your name is nastiness, Gary. Because you're a wicked and dirty, ugly, thiefing, lying wretch. And Lisa Anna tell the people, I'm go out and vote for the PMP candidate. And them tell me so. The PMP people, them. They don't want to vote for you, but them go. And some other people went. And Lisa wanted to win back her four seats. And she won them back. And didn't be able to win back, win, win Claremont. I wonder what trouble she neither. Lisa help her. Lisa help her. Because we know so she was only out defending Dayton after we start beat bad man all the time. Because we know never find nothing with her. I'm a dirty man. Real dirty man who treat women like trash. Any woman under 14, him treat them like trash. So, I mean, no, she never find nothing to do with him. But I him run, go, go look her. When I look people for back him up, for saying he's a good guy, people for make him look good, him run, go for all them baby man of them. She was one of them. And she won. She won because Lisa helped her. Lisa gave her office. Lisa gave her workers. Lisa gave her staff. And if she ever opened her mouth, I make nobody feel like a she win that on her own. It's not going to be nice. Not, not from this side. Lisa Anna won back her four divisions and get rid of teething, ugly, lying Lydia at the same time. Who said God? Let me hear an amen. No, God is good. Let me hear her amen. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Good. So, but down in Northwest St. Anne, where Dayton Campbell was the member of parliament for two terms. Two terms he was a member of parliament, and the place went born and grew on a bamboo. Him could even show him face down, they're going to help the PMP candidate for win. Him could even show him face down a bamboo, not even for a second. Go out, walk around and ask because, I mean, when you come from a, a community like that, pretty much everybody your family, you know. Pretty much everybody are you related. And Dayton Campbell couldn't go down there. Go tell them, say, them for vote for the PMP candidate. Him couldn't go, him, him couldn't go campaign for the PMP candidate. But him down a looter seat and run up and down like a, a, a red ants. Like a whip a red ants, my run up and down like an idiot. You now get looter seat. You now get looter seat. We're going to run you out a looter seat, Dayton Campbell. So if I were you, now look at next seat. Because you have no idea what's coming to you. Him want looter seat. Where looter does lose by five votes. Him lose fame. Seat down at Northwest St. Anne. And him couldn't even go down there. Go walk into the community. Where him born and grow. Where him parents. I think him, him parents still live. I think him have probably cousins and all kind of people live down. Him could go down and go help the PMP candidate. Now I would think. In a every community. When you are as um, disputatious and cantankerous as I am, you're going to have people who don't like you. But on election day, I never forgot for nobody for vote. But everybody was anxious for me to know that they voted. You see, power didn't gamble. That's what power is. Everybody was anxious for me to know that they went and voted. I couldn't cap a break. For so long on the palm tree for five minutes, 600 people. I come for show me say them go do it. And them, them there, and them, them there. Some big woman where, me never see up here, so yet, them always just either come screech or go vote. Sometimes we all think them vote labor rights. But the numbers never be heard at all. We just think it. Them come up early in them orange clothes. And them seat me up make sure we see them. It's a power date gamble. That's power. When people, when the people are seat you out to assure you that we went and vote for Patrick Roberts, the PMP candidate. I will want you to know that. I'm a mother power that's still under my power. That us. Let me say, do it because my mother not here. God bless my mother. I love you, Audrey Grant. But, so that is it. Lisa is a big winner. Our four seats. Now, all Lisa needs for the now is just jam. Just step back your seat. Because Lisa and I should be the next leader of the PMP. Because since Uno decide that to keep in mark to go into the local to the general elections, 
and I'm going to lose bad. Who could I deal? I'm going to lose bad. Who <laughs> could I deal? Here is an argument that I would like to say to you before I close. So for you to contemplate on. All right? I was discussing it with uh, somebody yesterday morning in the kitchen. Sometimes I like when I'm cooking, having a discussion with somebody on the phone. Phone and speaker, and we can talk. And I'm saying to the person, say, yeah, some old people came out and vote for the PMP. They may know who them vote for. And the person, and I think the, per, uh, the person was telling me about some other instance where some youth come check, come, um, come check him and I say things about, all right, them checks the PMP that go run with this thing about, no, no, go on. That tells me, that tells me that there is a great possibility that when the time come, to go campaign for the general elections. I want to start back the argument about getting rid of Brogard. There is going to be some old heap of young people who voted on the 26th of February in 2024 who are going to say to you, Why don't you tell us how I vote him out at the end of the year? I will go vote. And Brogard still there. Say, Brogard bad on the whole out now. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> Listen to me. Voters have short memories. And voters are an elusive group of people. And they are far more sophisticated than you all think they are. And there are going to be some people who tell you that you tell themselves for vote up, boy, we're going to do that, you know, for vote up, boy, we're going to do that. But Janu, we're going to bad man, you know, we're going to tell you what, we're going to. Bro, gonna stand firm. Them couldn't get rid of Vogad. What do you know? Said that is a rotted, potent possibility. Anyway, I'm going to end this now. Thank you very much for listening to me. I hope I was um, helpful in clearing up some cobwebs um, for some people. Um, uh, we're going to do a live soon to talk about some very, very important things. Why Mark had that strategy? Why he was campaigning um, on that, on that notion? And um, Look at some other possibilities and something. It's conjecture and possibilities. Um, we're going to talk about. There are some facts that I want to also share with you when we get to that live. But um, I can't get to that live right now. I'm here to do the, the voice note because I, I finished my research and I am feeling much better. So it would be um, remiss of me not to say to you all that um, I lost my, my grandnephew. Over the weekend, he was three months old. His name was Ahmad. He was born in the U.S., came here um, a month ago, came home. He took sick and died at um, Andrews Hospital. Um, so my nephew, Troy, is grieving the death of his son and my sister Susie. You know, my born again Holy Ghost filled water baptized sister. My, my little sister Susie. She is um hurting by that. My entire family. Because her mother was just three months old. And I've been trying to ask myself, um uh, well I'm asking God really. Or what, what, you know? I don't know. I, you have to I, I've got I've asked God to forgive me because I don't know what what he does or why he takes three months old baby, I do not know. But him is God. It's only him one know. So now, Ahmad is a little angel up in heaven. And um, and I'm sure I'm going to watch out for him, auntie. That's me. So I ask you all to um, say a prayer for Troy for me, my, my, my nephew. And um, his grandmother, Susie, because she... She's really, really beside herself in grief about that. So I ask you all to send up a prayer. Thank you very, very much for listening to me. God bless you all. Stay safe, everybody. And keep the children safe. All right? Thank you. <laughs>